Hey folks, Sean McCormack here. I'm just in the middle of doing class notes for the Lightroom Summit. So I thought I'd take a little break and do a very short edit for you. Just so you can see some of the things that have been happening with me over the weekend with the amazing aurora that we had. Even here in Ireland, it was amazing. And we had clear skies. And we never have clear skies for astronomical events, so it was absolutely wonderful. If you're not aware, the Lightroom Summit is on from the 20th to the 24th. 15 instructors. It's free to watch uh, while it's on. Uh, so for 48 hours... Uh, after the class you can watch it for free and then if you want to watch it after that you can get a vip pass uh, which is 99 dollars, and you will watch it basically for the year uh, but it also includes extra videos extra presets and class notes so it's actually worth getting from the point of view that you get loads of additional material as well but like i say it's free to watch so please do go to the link uh, and sign up all right and i will see you at it i've done a fair bit of work on it and i'm really happy with my classes anyway back and let's get editing so here we have a basic image shot in camera. Uh, now we're shooting a variety of lenses and stuff like this. In this case, I was using the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 at f1.8. Now we did go for a four second exposure compared to say the Milky Way exposures where it could be 15 seconds, 30 seconds. This is quite a short one. Now I could have bumped my uh, aperture here and increased my ISO to get more depth of field, but this is what I opted to go for. Did I make a mistake? I don't know. Uh, this could have been more in focus, definitely. Uh, but I think I still would have needed to have a greater depth of field and the ISO would have been quite a lot. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come in and we're going to start off in basic and we're going to just swap to a more vivid look. Now the eyes, what we see with the eyes is not the vivid colours that you would normally see, well at least down this far south. So you have to start from somewhere. Now we can see here that this is quite underexposed, there's a few little bits here. So we need to get the brighter parts of the image brighter. And rather than using exposure in this case, what we'll do is we'll actually go to whites. And we'll bring this up and this will allow us to brighten the image. So there we go. In fact, if you wanted, we could press the J key for a second. And we'll see what's clipping. And we could bring this up. And we're not getting any clipping at the top and that's too bright now. Let's turn off the J key. So I think there is probably enough. Now what we need to watch is that we're not getting little bits of banding between edges of color, which can look a bit weird. So what we can do is we can pull the highlights down a little bit to compensate for that. I love these little lines and bands. It's just beautiful. A little bit of a satellite going on there as well that's become visible from that. Now we can change our white balance a little bit. So like obviously the colors are reasonably, reasonably good there. But I think we might aim for a little bit more towards 5000. Get a little bit of kind of blue happening in the sky. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to Lens Corrections. And what I'm going to do is, with the vignetting, it's picked the profile here for the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have a look at vignetting. So I'm actually going to increase the amount of vignetting that's been done to just kind of recover some of these darkened edges. I could potentially do that with a radial tool as well. But I'm just going to do that just to get a little bit of it ready there because the darkening is clearly a lens issue. Now, what can we do? Well, we can come here to uh, our basic and we can add a bit of clarity. OK, that's going to bring us some details in the star behind. Now we can look at it backwards and forwards, but it's also bringing a little bit of definition to the lines. But one thing I have to watch out for, look at those edges, We're getting a little bit of haloing along the edges. So how about instead of that, we go to masking, choose the sky and then we come down to effects instead. And then we increase clarity here. OK, so well, there is still some haloing, but it's not as bad. OK, let's so bring that up. Now, if you want, you can try, well, what does texture look like? It's kind of bringing a little bit of grit and grain. But what you can do is you can use texture to enhance the brightest stars. If you pull down texture and increase clarity, it does bring a little bit of definition to those other stars. OK, now we're still seeing a little bit of that haloing. There's not a whole lot I can necessarily do about that. That's from the clarity. And even if we mask it, that's it's going to come back. What I'm going to do is I am actually going to go duplicate and invert this mask to select the church and then we can decide uh, or well the abbey rather. Technically it's a friary but everybody locally refers it as to the as the abbey uh, in Ross Early in Hedford. So we can uh, bring up the exposure on that a little bit just so there's some detail in it and it's a little bit warm so let's cool down the colors just have it go a little bit closer to the more natural gray that you would be used to see in there. I'm not sure there's much in the way of a tint. Not really. 
So I might just leave that at zero. So what have we got now? Well, if we use the backslash key, we can see our kind of our before and after. There's a lot of contrast and color being added there. And I quite like that. Now, there's obviously those limitations where I, there's definitely little bits of hidden going on here. But I'm still happy enough with this in, in terms of the edit. I press the Y key, you can see a before and an after as well. So I have not added colors that don't exist there. The colors that are there all exist. I am just bringing them out and enhancing them. That's it, the same as I would with anyway. But you'll notice that even with this, turn off mask here, that I've not actually touched vibrance or saturation in the process of doing this. All of the vibrance and saturation that's been added has come from contrast. And for the most part, that's because it was already there. And we've just brought it out. Probably the most obvious thing that could be fixed from here as well is that it's kind of noisy. There is, we can definitely see grain. We zoom in here. Now, this is only at ISO 640. It's not terrible. It's more than acceptable under normal circumstances. But because in detail, we now have the option to do denoise. Let's pull up denoise. This will create a new DNG file. Uh, it includes raw details, so it's doing some sharpening as well. Yep, that's fine. That looks good. We still have the detail that we need. In fact, it's brought out some of the stars that weren't really visible. So I've got it about 42. That looks good. 25 seconds, and it'll create a stack. So we're going to just click Enhance. And this will basically, like I say, will create a second file. And this second file uh, will we'll have more noise. And what we can do is we can go backwards and forwards. Although, in fairness, normally a lot of people would do uh, just denoise at the beginning. But it's okay to do it at the end and because everything will just basically be rebuilt. Okay, here we go. We now have a new file. And we zoom in, we can see that all of that noise is gone. And we still have lots of detail in there. It's pretty good. It was windy. I think we're seeing a little bit of wind motion here as well, slightly, but it's not really visible at uh, at the at the depth we're at here. And there's our a satellite going over. Uh, so what we do is, if we come in here, press G for a second, uh, and then what we can do is, that off where we now, G, and then go S, and we select the two of them, and then we go E. What we can do is then we can use the arrow keys to go between the two. And you can see that the difference the noise reduction has made. It's actually brightened the image as well a little bit because some of that noise is gone. The noise creates uh, patterns which uh, are darker because of the change in smoothness, in, in luminance. Yeah, that's great. So that is our final image. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Uh, hit the bell if you want to get notified. And give the video a like if you liked it. Thank you.